A while ago, I started writing my own 3D renderer, but this one was different because it renders to terminal characters in the terminal. I thought it would be cool to try to implement Minecraft in the terminal, so I started writing my own CPU rendering engine in Rust. I learned a lot about graphics programming from implementing my own CPU rendering engine. However, I got sick of the project and it was abandoned for six months. Then, on the seventh month, I wanted to learn Zig, and I wanted to learn Vulkan, so I started rewriting the whole thing in Zig using Vulkan. The old one would have faced some performance problems, so using Vulkan would make this project actually feasible. The first step was to get the basic triangle, the hello world of graphics programming. Normally the GPU blasts the output image directly to the screen. With me, that's not an option because I'm rendering to the terminal. So what I have to do is direct the output to an image which I can access on the CPU and then print characters in the terminal to represent the pixels of that image. But wouldn't that be really low resolution? Yes. However, it's made less so by using the upper half block character, which essentially allows me to double the resolution vertically. It also means that the pixels can be square instead of rectangles. But none of this is any use without color. Well, thankfully, you can print colored characters in the terminal. And most terminals even support 24-bit RGB colors. So simply by writing this fancy sequence to the terminal, I can set the foreground and the background color of the character that I'm about to print. And by using the upper half block character, I can set the foreground color to the pixel above and the background color to the pixel below to make it look like there are two pixels one above the other. And BAM! We have Minecraft. Well, not Minecraft yet. Just a triangle. The next step was to get a camera and a perspective matrix working, and to figure out how to upload these to the GPU so that they can be run in the vertex shader. Somehow it took me two days to get this working. Everyone has different ways of formatting projection matrices, and it's very confusing trying to figure out which one is the right one. Why wouldn't you just learn the maths and figure out how to derive it yourself? With that out of the way, the next thing to do was to add some way to get user input so that the camera could move around. Then I added a vertex attribute to act as the texture coordinates. Vertex attributes get interpolated for each fragment automatically on the GPU. Then I added textures. Oh. Then I added textures. Okay, this time it will work. After much pain, I did eventually get the textures working. Also, I made it a square for some reason. But Minecraft is not made out of squares, it's made out of cubes. So I took an inordinate amount of time to try and figure out the correct arrangement of indices to create a cube. Yay, cube. Oh no, what is wrong with the cube? So I had to throw out all my hard work and start again, because each of the faces needed their own texture coordinates. So essentially, I had to split the faces each into its own mesh. The next thing to do was to work on the world generation. Unlike the textures, this worked perfectly the first time. So I just realized that I haven't got a depth buffer, which is why you can kind of see through some of these cubes. And after adding the depth buffer, I had my first chunk rendering. Now, as you can see, the side of the grass is the side of the grass, but the top of the grass is also the side of the grass. So I had to go create a texture atlas. A texture atlas is a big texture of lots of different textures, and it allows me to manipulate the texture coordinates so that each face has a different texture. Then after slapping in a bit of Perlin noise and a background color, we basically have Minecraft. The code is spaghetti, and I couldn't be bothered loading chunks as the camera moves, but I'm calling it quits for this project. Thanks for watching.